on the side of the head. Did, did the fist land with a punch, and then did you hit him with the elbow somewhere? And if so, do you know where you got him? Um, look a little closer, because it was a left hook that clipped him above the ear, and to hit a guy above the ear and to the back, that, as long as it doesn't go right back, if it's above the ear and here, if it's above the ear but behind the ear, that's a clean blow. Uh, I had a discussion with Herb Dean right before the contest happened, and um, so it was a clean blow, but I would have liked him to connect with the chain, I would have liked him to connect cleaner, but there's so much soft, beautiful tissue there that if you crack that little soft area, there's no coming back from that, so... Um, look a little closer, it was a legal shot, um, and that was that. Did you see that, Dana? What, what did you think? Because you had a better view than we did. We were on the other side of the cage. Yeah, right? no, I, I, it looked legal to me, too. Did you think, that, did the fist land at all, Connor? Did at you at no the, point did I get up and go, oh man, that, that was to the back of the head. Did, did, it, did, you, did the contact come with your elbow or your fist? No, it was, the, it was the fist. I fell into it a little bit, to be honest. Looking back, I didn't like it. I double, double jabbed and... F I kind of fell into the left hook a little bit. The first, I threw one before that, where I just let the left hook ping, and my, I didn't move my body too much, but it just cracked him. That was the one that hurt him. But the one that finished him, I fell into a little bit. But it hit him with the fist, at the back of the head, but above the ear, which is a legal blow. Um, at the end of the day, it was a clean shot, and, and that was that. For me, I don't like the way people look at the referee. You know, like, he didn't get up and complain. He knew it was a clean shot. If I got knocked out that way, I wouldn't be up here saying it was an illegal blow, I would, I would recognize I was knocked out and that was that, so. Did Dustin say anything to you, either in the ring or in the back? Uh, no, in, in, in the ring he was humble, you know, Dustin is a good, is a good kid. Um, I had no ill feelings towards Dustin. It, it, it was weird to me that he was like, I've never hated a guy as much as I hate this guy in my life or, or something like that, he said. To me that is weird. I cannot hate a man that has the same dreams as me. And, you know, I have no emotion to them at the end of the day. I am on my journey. Um, so he's a humble guy, he came to fight, and I have nothing but respect for these competitors. Make no mistake, I am cocky in prediction, I am confident in preparation, but I am always humble in victory or defeat. So I am, I am humble here and I am grateful for the opportunity that the UFC, Dana and Lorenzo, Uncle Frank IV have given me. I am grateful. That, that would leave either the winner of uh, Aldo and Mendez or uh, Cub Swanson and Frankie Edgar. Uh, obviously, um, you're, you've arrived. Is anything short of a title shot something you consider at this point if they offered you uh, the winner of uh, Cub and Frankie? Um, we don't, you know, at the end of the day, as long as I show up and my check is what it says it's going to be, then I show up and I will kill whoever they put in front of me. Of course I want that gold belt. Don't try and tell me that that gold belt sitting up right there on this table would not look great to go alongside this ivory elephant trunk suit that I have got on me right now. It would look perfect. I know Dana wants to see it. I know Lorenzo wants to see it. Shout out to Uncle Frank. I know he wants to see it. It's what the fans want, it's what I want, it's what I said. I said I was gonna put him away in one round. No one's ever knocked him out. No one has ever done that to Dustin before. He's a great guy. I have nothing but respect for him. I don't just knock him out, I also picked the round. For uh, Kat Zingano. Um, I just put the work in, you know, I don't, I don't slack off. 365 days a year, 24-7. Um, I'm, I'm getting better, you know, that, that's what it's about, this game is about growth. I find that a lot of mixed martial artists, or a lot of athletes, period, get to a stage where they are happy with their ability, and then it's about maintenance. It's about showing up at the gym, it's about getting hard rounds in, it's about getting miles on the road in. But really, their skill level is not growing, their, the skill level is staying the same, and then Throughout time, their body is deteriorating. Throughout wars in the gym, throughout wars in the octagon, they deteriorate. As I feel I train smart, um, I listen to my body, and this is only my second fight back, back from ACL. It's been under a year since ACL surgery. I've had two fights, two first round finishes. Would you doubt me? You probably did, but would you doubt me now? Uh, and also before the fight, uh, we heard you talk a lot about going to Brazil and that, you know, you were hoping to be ready in case there was an injury and you mentioned it again after the fight. Is that the plan? I mean, are you going to stay in shape these next few weeks just in case something happens? Damn, you're damn right. As long as there's money on the line, I show up in shape. You best believe that. 
Uh, and lastly, you said the uh, belt would look really good in front of you. Well, we heard you were carrying around the belt after the fight. What happened to it? Um, the belt, they left the belt hanging there somewhere, uh, just in front of the Fox Studios, and I said, or in the Fox Sports and one lot, or the UFC on Fox thing, and I picked it up and brought it on stage, and I was sitting, it's funny, right, because I was sitting, after the weigh-ins, they brought me onto that stage as well, and I was rehyd or dehydrated, I was rehydrating myself, but I had to do this interview, push the show, pu push the numbers again, professional inside, professional outside, that's what I like to say, but anyway, I was sitting there in a vest top, a pair of shades, and Rashad, uh, Brian Stan and John Anik were standing there and I'm telling and they're all saying it's going to be a tough fight I'm saying it's not going to be a tough fight I'm going to make it look easy I'm going to stop him in the first round and in the corner of my eye I can see, I can see Rashad looking at me like what's this uh, what's this crazy Irish motherfucker saying he's, he's not you know what I mean I could sense doubt in him so when I when they offered me to go up again I went up this elephant trunk ivory suit Saw the belt, picked up the belt, put it on the table, and I said, "Now what, Rashad? I know, I know you were doubting me. I know you doubted me, and and that was that. He 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 agreed. He was doubting me. He didn't he didn't believe the hype, as he said. But it's beautiful for me. I love this. I love proving people wrong and proving my support right. That's what it's about at the end of the day. You know, this is this is all fun and games to me. I love it. I love my job. I whoop people for truckloads of cash." How could I hate this life? I love it so much. I am grateful every single day. Thanks. Um.